uh, presiding officer. Uh, let me uh, thank Mark Griffin for the opportunity to debate uh, this important subject and equally uh, to thank uh, Macmillan. Uh, and I do so in a personal capacity as a family, as so many others have, have benefited uh, over the years from support uh, from Macmillan uh, in, in terminal illness. Um, it, it's worth saying, as the person here who's statistically closest to death uh, than anyone else who's present, that death is the last great taboo. And therefore, we often do not engage with the idea of death and the necessity of preparing for death in a way that would support the person who's departing and those who care for them uh, to an adequate extent. That lack of recognition is part of it. Um, I'd just make a minor observation that the one thing that hasn't emerged in the debate, which slightly surprised me, I must say, uh, is uh, the role of faith communities in supporting uh, families uh, with terminally ill people. The visit from the priest, from the pastor, from the minister, from an elder of a church uh, can often be a very important part of the support before death, but also uh, in the bereavement process that both Mark Griffin and Monica Lemon Lennon uh, uh, re referred to after death. As a GP's son, uh, I'm aware of the conventional view of bereavement that there are five phases and that basically it lasts six months. And it is important, as uh, Monica Lennon and Mark Griffin said, that there is support for people in that phase. Because it does not matter how unexpected a death may be or how long anticipated it is, it is a shock when it happens and the bereavement uh, support uh, for the carer uh, is very, very important in, indeed. Now, of course, modern medicine has created particular problems in this regard. Uh, first of all, people survive a diagnosis of a terminal condition much longer than they used to. They may survive with comorbidities, people with many different conditions, with a complex set of needs and a complex uh, range of support that's required from medical uh, profession. So we create a problem, in a sense, uh, for the system of supporting carers. We expect more of carers through that comorbidity, and we expect longer support because of generally longer survival times after uh, diagnosis. So therefore, this whole issue is becoming more important, has become uh, more important uh, than it ever was. And we can't uh, start to help people understand the process of death, the process of bereavement early enough. It's one of the reasons, it may sound quite trivial, why it's quite important for children to have pets because it confronts uh, for them in their lives the idea that nothing in life is actually forever because pets tend to die. And that is true of us as it is uh, for our pets. So therefore I hope uh, that this debate makes its own modest contribution uh, to engaging us with the idea that death is normal and natural. Indeed, it's important that we move out of the way to allow the next generation uh, to come through. But the, the study that Macmillan's have done is a very valuable contribution to both understanding the pressures on carers and the support and perhaps the support gaps uh, that we now need to address. And as a rural uh, MSP, I in particular point to the difficulties in reaching people in rural areas and identifying carers. They're more likely to be non-identified and lack support in rural areas. Once again, presiding officer, we can never thank Macmillan too much. I do so again.